Welcome to season 10 of Accountants of Sexy Changed My Mind. In this season, we have 10 brand spanking new guests to introduce you to. We will be talking about things like exit plans, niching your business, you'll meet one of the captains. We're going to talk about finding your spiritual home, and we even have, of course, a discussion on AI and how it can improve, improve your business. So stick with us, but before I introduce you to any guests, please meet our new sponsor, Swoop for Advisors. For those of you who haven't heard of Swoop for Advisors, we partner with accountants and bookkeepers to help their SME clients get access to grants, loans, commercial mortgages, equity investment, R&D, savings, and much, much more. We're a one-stop shop funding platform for SMEs, helping them find all the best available options in the market across a wide range of products to support their growth at all stages of their life cycle. Our job is to make you look like the heroes in your client's eyes. So another massive thank you from me to Swoop for Advisors for sponsoring the show. Before I introduce you to the next guest, can I just ask for you to take a second and make sure that you are subscribed to any channel that you're watching this on, be that Spotify or Apple or iTunes or wherever you are, if you just take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's really helpful information to us to understand how this podcast is received um, and we can just continue to improve it the more we know. So thank you for taking the time and I'm going to hand you over to the next guest. Right. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Accountants of Sexy, Change My Mind. Now, today we have a lovely guest on, Dana Chapman, and I'm going to tell the story of where I met you, Dana. Fabulous. I went on to a, um, I went on to a networking, an online networking event, which I never do these days, mm-hmm. um, but just just happened to go on to one of these, and you shone. Like, you really stood out from the other 20, 30, however many people were on that call, and I was like, immediately, I wrote your name down and I said, I'm going to ask her to come on my podcast. From that tiny little introduction. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so, very kind of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you like to tell everybody what it is you do? And then I can start talking about why I've invited you here. Absolutely. I am a nutritional therapist. I think people are beginning to understand what it is that we do. I don't just tell people what they should be eating but rather what I love to do is explain how our bodies work and Mm. how to get them to work better brilliant brilliant so (laughs) my own personal agenda is menopause Mm -hmm. the menopause discussion is still like not still it's only just getting going we're Mm -hmm. only just really starting to crank the kind of handles on this and, yeah. and talk about it openly. And I know that you've worked with people who are experiencing menopausal symptoms. Um, and I know that you gave me some very valuable uh, information about seed cycling. So I wanted to kind of bring you on and just talk about nutrition through through menopausal times. Mm, absolutely. Um, and maybe I can start off with just an explanation of what actually goes on in menopause. And nobody knows. No, well, (laughs) they know that they stop producing hormones, but why? Well, I suppose we know why as well. But we also don't understand that estrogen, which is the main hormone that gets that stops being produced in menopause, or actually once you're menopausal, and that whole transition is your ovaries producing less estrogen. But estrogen is such a vital ingredient in the body for so many processes. Making serotonin is just one of them. And we don't really know this about estrogen, but other organs take over some of the slack in making estrogen because it is such a necessary ingredient in our bodies for so many important bodily functions. So post-menopause our adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, which actually are responsible for creating, uh, adrenal gives the name away a little bit, but they are responsible for creating our adrenaline Mm -hmm. in those periods where we need that short burst of energy. Mm -hmm. But they are also important for creating cortisol. 
Yeah. And this lovely world that we live in these days where stress is so high and so prolonged, our adrenal glands are pumping out so much cortisol that come menopause, they're like, I'm sorry, I don't actually have any more resources to do more work for you now to create some more hormones for you. Mm-hmm. So please go and ask a doctor for HRT, basically. Uh, yeah, that's so interesting because like we're bombarded... Uh, whilst at the same time it's almost paradoxical like the conversation is only just getting started Mm. we're still bombarded with information that just and with no or little context so i remember being told you need to get your cortisol levels down and i had no idea why there was no context to that yeah but that's probably really what they meant would you say yes yes potentially but cortisol cortisol and our sex hormones are all made on the same pathway actually so if you are stressed your body's going to shunt resources towards producing cortisol because you need to survive Mm. reproducing is not necessary for survival but staying alive right now today is important so your body if you are under stress will always produce cortisol which means Mm. that you don't have any resources left even pre-menopause, to mm-hmm. make your hormones effectively. Right. And the other thing, the other hormone that your adrenal glands make is progesterone. Yes. And perimenopausally, so before menopause, estrogen levels are actually very, very high. They're almost the similar height of estrogen production as when we go through puberty. Okay which a lot of people don't actually know. They think, oh, I just need to go on HRT, which is normally estrogen, but actually you need progesterone. And I always like to refer to progesterone as the calm to the estrogen storm. So go to people in perimenopause, go on HRT for the health of their family so that they don't (laughs) kill their family because they don't have that progesterone to go... Let's just calm the farm. Everything's yeah. okay. You'll be all right. We don't have that progesterone because our adrenal glands are working so hard to create those uh, stress hormones yeah. that we're not creating that progesterone. So you get that imbalance of estrogen and progesterone perimenopausally. Wow. Um, and then postmenopausally, our adrenals are completely shot so that you're not producing the estrogen that you need to because there's no capacity there in that tiny little gland. Right. I, whilst I fully appreciate, I had no idea that that was going on. Like yeah. I, I'm on, I'm on a combined patch. Okay. I don't know what it's called? Ev- Evra, yep. Evra, blah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's given me both of those. Yep. And I remember when I first took it, and we're going back about six months now, I... I put the patch on and within about 24 hours and lasting about 72 hours, I melted down like, like melted. Like mm. I was, horm- like I say hormonal, like you say hormonal is in like angry. I was hormonal. I was angry. I was like, I had headaches. I was crying. My, my poor, poor husband bought in a plate of food because I couldn't get out of bed, which is so unlike me. Well, wow. he bought in this plate of food and I was, I just burst into tears. I was like, that's too much on the plate. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like, what a crazy thing to cry about. But it just overwhelmed me. I couldn't, I couldn't fathom it. But I think what was happening was I, my body was so depleted Mm-mm. that this it's rush of hormones came in and it wasn't until a couple of months in that it just kind of balanced out and stabilised. Yeah. And we are, are super depleted and we don't, we don't even know. No, I don't. I, I think we might know, but we don't acknowledge. Yeah, don't recognise. Just play, to play around with words because it's not no. necessarily spoken about or accepted. Yes, but also we're just expected to all carry on and be busy, busy, yeah. busy, 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 busy. And it's just the way life is right now. So just get on with it. Like, yeah. you know, Can't you change being final. a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we do, as women, don't we? We take on so much. It's not yes. just the role that we have to play in the work environment. It's the role that we play at home as well. 
So. so I want to talk about like the drop in estrogen and the symptoms because I think a lot of the time mm -hmm. it's going off the off the back of that people wrongly diagnose themselves. Yep. So I probably had a couple of years of quite painful hands, like all of the joints, especially around my wrists and in my hands and in my knuckles, like and I lost grip. Mm. That was I experienced that for a couple of years. Once I took HRT, that went away. It's mm. actually starting to come back, which means I probably need to go and get my dosage adjusted or something. Mm -hmm. But it just simply went away. So what other symptoms are we wrongly diagnosing or missing potentially? Gosh, there are loads of perimenopausal symptoms that people don't actually realise. Um, headaches can be mm -hmm. one, especially in that perimenopausal phase. Lots of people can suffer from headaches. Mm -hmm. um, skin breakouts can, be, yeah. can form part of the picture as well. Depression, anxiety. Anxiety specifically can really increase mm. uh, perimenopausally and then going on into menopause. So there's a number of mental health related symptoms. I think lots of people perimenopausally and in menopause really struggle with word recall and you're halfway <laughs> through a sentence and then, <laughs> yeah, you know it. Halfway through a sentence and then you're like, oh, I've actually forgotten what I was talking about. Yeah, there is no, like, oh, anyone that's spoken to me in the past couple of years will have experienced me saying, what was that word? What is that word? Yeah. And I can describe, I can describe the word. I can describe yeah. what I'm supposed to be saying, but the word, not even yeah. there. <laughs> I've seen someone that you know very well and then their name just completely um, is erased from your mind. I am... Yeah. Um, I have ADHD and I think part of ADHD is this stupid record player in my head <laughs> about all of the mistakes I've made. And I can oh. visualize all of the people that I've forgotten their names and it replays in my head. I can oh. know when and where. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh dear. No, not, not a good trait to keep. No, no, trying to thin it off, but you know, yeah. we'll, we'll laugh at it until it does. That's what I Good. say. <laughs> so, Good. yeah, so symptoms, there's tons and tons of symptoms. And I guess when I started my journey, mm. I was trying to treat the symptoms because I didn't understand the cause. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking that I had arthritis and I, or carpal tunnel syndrome or RSI or something like that. So I got gloves and I tried to type less and things like that. So I was treating the symptom. And then um, for stress, I was taking calms. And for sleep, I was um, trying all different kind of remedies to get me to sleep easier. So when people come to you, do they come to you to treat the symptoms or are they coming knowing that they're treating menopausal symptoms? It's normally the symptoms that bring them to me mm. and understanding that there needs to be a more holistic approach to the treatment or I can never say that I treat anyone, the support in going through that phase. Mm -hmm. But the absolute joy of nutritional therapy is you understand how all of the systems of the body work in tandem with each other. The hormonal mm -hmm. system works with the gastrointestinal system, which works with the immune system, which works, you know, everything is so intertwined. So mm -hmm. you're looking at the person and really personalizing the approach to them. What's going on for you? What are your symptoms? And what is the root cause of the symptoms? And then mm -hmm. let's address that root cause. So let's get the hormones balanced. Do you need to maybe look at your adrenal function and your stress levels to help support balancing those hormones? Do yeah. you need to look at the gut to help support balancing those hormones? Because once you've used your estrogen, you actually need to detoxify it and excrete it out of the body. And the gut plays a really important role in doing that for you. Right. If you're not moving your bowels on a daily basis, you're not getting rid of any of the toxins. And those toxins oh. recirculate up through the liver. And then that can place an extra stress burden on the body. So it's just about thinking about the body as a whole and how it all works in tandem with each other. And making tweaks that are achievable and sustainable for that person and then using supplementation to help support any deficiencies in the diet or any 
deficiencies within the body because like you said earlier we're coming into this depleted Mm. so it's about understanding the use of you know what kind of nutrients can we really help support during this phase of life I feel like that was a very long answer to your short question no 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 it's good it's 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 good it's what we need to hear so with your um with the supplements Mm. I think people as did I, I'm like not preaching here, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'll just go and buy supplements because mm. they sound like something I should have, but they are probably not. I, I had, um, along with the HR, like when I was asking for HRT, mm. they gave me some blood tests mm-hmm. and they told me that I was deficient in iron. So nice. um, I had no idea. I was taking other supplements for other things. I was taking mm-hmm. 12 and other mm. stuff that people have kind of mentioned but mm. I wasn't taking iron and iron is the thing that's actually fixed the problems. So yeah. how, how do you work with your clients to work out what, what they need, what they're deficient of? Uh, so you can very much do it using questioning. So just mm. by understanding what symptoms somebody is having, that gives you an identification or an idea of what nutrients might be deficient in that person. Mm. But there are a number of tests that you can do that will help really nail down whether you are deficient in nutrients. Now, I often work with my client's GPs and I send them back to their GP and I say, please, can you run these tests? Because I'm trying to help support this client in achieving their health goals. Mm. And in that way, you can get a number of free blood tests done. They don't test things like magnesium. They don't test things like zinc, which are all key nutrients as well. So if you wanted a more in-depth test, you can do your own private blood testing, Mm -hmm. which I use a number of laboratories to do that. And then another one that I like to run is called an organic acids test. And that can test for other certain nutrient deficiencies and depletions like your B vitamins and your magnesium. And it might give an indication of zinc as well. But all of those nutrients, so I say zinc because it's some it's a nutrient that not many people talk about. No. But it is the so other essential. Two, definitely. Say that again. Yeah, the other two, definitely. I don't yep. mm-hmm. hardly heard zinc mentioned. No, and zinc is so important for brain health and brain function, mm. as well as mental health, so depression and anxiety. Mm. And you mentioned ADHD earlier. Mm. People with ADHD are often deficient in zinc because Mm. zinc and copper in the body work in opposition to each other and that can knock your zinc levels out of balance so doing some specific testing to find out what your nutrient deficiencies are Mm. might be a good way to go but not everybody's got the money for testing you're Mm. looking at an organic acids test is close to 300 pounds oh wow um so you can then through my experience and through my knowledge, I know what supplements may be best for you, for mm. your life stage, for what is going on for you. Mm. And unfortunately, the supplement industry is not regulated. No. So anyone can produce a supplement. And I always caveat supplements with, if you are taking any medication, you need to check with a healthcare provider like myself to make sure that the nutrients, the supplements, and the medication don't interact with each other. Because Mm -hmm. a lot of medications do have interactions with supplements, which means that you can either be upregulating the medication or you can be reducing its effect. So very, very important to, if you are on medication, to check that there aren't any of those interactions. Mm -hmm. And is there... Is that something they need to speak to a health professional about or does it say it on the jar? Like, does it say what it interacts with? No, often it doesn't. Very, very often it doesn't because you can't list, you know, on on a magnesium bottle, you can't list all of the medications that that it, it interacts with. But I think on all supplements, it does say, please check with your healthcare provider before taking this. Yeah. I think it does say that on all supplement bottles mm. but you're not going to walk into Holland and Barrett and walk out with nothing or walk out with something and then go call your doctor are you yeah Holland and Barrett might be becoming my new best friend <laughs> let, let it not <laughs> um, the, the, other, the other the other point that I was going to make 
on supplements is because it's not a regulated industry, mm. there are lots of players in the field. Yeah. And there are lots of different forms of vitamins and minerals mm. that cheaper forms of the vitamins and minerals are very hard for the body to absorb. Okay. So you might be paying for the pill, but your body's not actually absorbing the what it, what it says on the back of the bottle. So if on the back of the bottle it says it's a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, if it's not the right form of vitamin C, are you actually absorbing that thousand milligrams? Yeah, yeah, oh, that is interesting. So with your um, your nutritional side, obviously yep. I think you were speaking about gut health when I when I heard you in the room, yes. um, which is a real big kind of driver for me at the moment to get my gut health better improve yep. my gut health not that I have yep. any way of knowing but yeah. if I work on it it's going to improve right that's my yep. logic yeah so where do you start with the, the thinking about gut health and and why why should they why should they bother oh the gut is so central to so many different things 70% of your immune system is in your gut so autoimmunity has a gut link your gut is where you absorb the nutrients from the food that you are eating. So mm. if you are not absorbing the food that you are eating, then you won't have the nutrients for your body to work effectively. Mm-hmm. And where to start with gut health? I always tell people it's actually probably something that nobody even thinks about doing because it's free and we all want to pay for advice and pay to do something <laughs> to fix our gut. But one of the key ways to look after your gut is to make sure every time you eat you're sitting down you are in a relaxed state you are looking at your food and smelling it and you're chewing it effectively Um, and why is that important that is where digestion digestion actually starts before you put food in your mouth So if you want to be able to absorb the nutrients from the food that you're eating, Mm. you need your digestive capacity to be working effectively. If you're running around, your body is in fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. So there's two different nervous system modes. There's sympathetic, which is fight and fight. And then there's parasympathetic, which I like to call rest, digest and repair. You can't be in both at the same time. So you can't be rushing around and your body going, oh, nice, you've eaten such a lovely meal, I'm going to digest it properly for you so that you have all of the nutrients from it. It doesn't work like that. And I think lots of people notice the effects if they are massively stressed out about the presentation that they're going to do or a race that they're about to run and they can feel it in their gut. Their gut literally just empties. Um, And that's because your body is saying don't have time now to digest, I'm in fight or flight mode. So it just gets rid of everything. So eating on the run or not chewing your food sufficiently means that your digestion capacity Mm -hmm. is reduced from the get-go, which means that you're not going to be absorbing those wonderful nutrients Mm. from the food. Yeah, I think we're well. most people are guilty of just eating, just like cramming a sandwich down at lunchtime or worse could be if you're talking to my husband he's probably on a on a pizza or something like that or a mcdonald's so (laughs) but you do you kind of cram it in because you're so focused on doing something else that food becomes less important so it's changing the emphasis of that importance yeah and food we have changed the importance of food we eat food now because we're hungry Mm. Or, you know, because it's breakfast time and lunch time and, you know, that's what we do. We eat. Yeah. We're not seeing food as this is a time that I can choose to nourish my body with the nutrients that it needs to perform Mm. the functions that it needs to perform. Mm. Right. Let's go back to estrogen because we're talking about menopause earlier. Your body doesn't just go, oh, you need some estrogen. Poof, there you go. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Right. Estrogen is actually made from cholesterol. Um, All of our hormones are made from cholesterol. But the body needs to take that cholesterol and convert it through a number of processes to be able to pop out the estrogen. So you Mm. need all of those. And all of those processes 
need ingredients. It's like making a cake. You need the flour and you need the eggs and you need the sugar. So to make our estrogen, we need the cholesterol and we need vitamins and minerals like magnesium and B6 and iron are all essential to convert that cholesterol into your estrogen. So we need to be seeing food as a source of, you know, these are the raw ingredients to my cake and I need to be eating them because my body needs to bake a really nice cake. Yeah, and who wants to bake a horrible cake? That makes no sense. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. a cake that flops because that's what we tend uh, to do no one wants a soggy bottom day now <laughs> <laughs> <Love it. laughs> so with these ingredients then i is there um is do you have generic advice that kind of just sits across the board like a baseline nutritional advice i do Um, And it comes through all the research through the organization that I belong to, which regulates nutritional therapists. It's called the British Association of Nutritional Therapy and Lifestyle Medicine. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is that we need to be eating seven portions of fruit and vegetables a day, capped at two portions of fruit. If you're trying to lose weight, that's capped at one portion of fruit. So you're aiming for either five or six portions of vegetables. Now, a portion is about the size of a medium apple or about 80 grams. If you're looking at your raw leafies, that's about 20 grams is about a portion size. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you're looking at building your plate in a really good way, breakfast, lunch, and dinner to help ensure that your body's got energy and other nutrients as well. So Mm -hmm. as well as the six or seven portions of vegetables a day, you're looking at every time you eat, you need to be getting a palm size portion of protein. So that's okay. about the size and thickness of your palm. Mm. So you're thinking about two or three boiled eggs is about the size, uh, portion size or 100, 120 gram uh, chicken breast or salmon, you know, fillet of salmon or something like that. Mm. Beans and lentils, you need a little bit more than the palm size if you're getting your um protein from beans and lentils then it needs to be slightly bigger than that the other recommendation is carbohydrates should be limited to the size of your fist so if you clench your fist that's about the amount of carbohydrates that you need at each meal yeah definitely guilty of that definitely (laughs) a bowl of pasta is slightly slightly bigger than that isn't it yeah and then uh, and then healthy fats we forget about the healthy fats and how many nutrients are loaded into healthy fats and how all of our joints and all of our cells actually need these healthy fats to remain plump and functioning effectively yeah i was just going to say 60 percent of our brain is fat so we also need to be feeding it fat so you think about things like olive oil oily fish nuts and seeds avocados are about your sources of healthy fats coconut and coconut oil is great source as well Um, butter is also not a bad source of fat although you need to be looking at your saturated fat intake in total of the day shouldn't be more than about 20 percent of your total fat intake Um, but i love i love using grass-fed butter I love using olive oil. Olive oil is also amazing for the gut microbiome, so amazing for your gut health, Mm. Um, loaded with polyphenols, so really going to help detoxify the body as well. Mm. So those really are the principles. And if you look at how we're eating these days, we're not sitting down and having, you know, a fist-sized portion of carbohydrates and a palm-sized portion of protein at breakfast, are we? No, because we've become a society of I'll grab a slice of toast or a bowl of cereal or, you know, if I'm being good, I'm mm. doing porridge. I don't love porridge. I I do love porridge and I'm, I am I do, but I also love semolina and I'm a big uh-huh. semolina fan. I don't know how you feel about that, but so that's my big thing. <laughs> grains are fine, but we need to be adding the protein and the fat to it. Yeah. So when I do porridge in the morning for the kids, I'll crack an egg into it. And people look at me like I'm crazy every time I say that. But it makes it really cakey and quite thick. But yeah. immediately you're adding in things like vitamin A, which is good for eye health, brain health, skin health, 
you're adding mm-hmm. in choline, which is great for brain health. Mm-hmm. You're adding in some healthy fats as well. So you're adding in all these essential nutrients with something as simple as cracking an egg into it. Mm, interesting. So my current go-to breakfast when I cook one with oats is to make an oat pancake. Yeah. So with, and I'm trying to have a plant-based diet, not a silly meat, but a plant-based diet so I can increase yeah. the amount of plant stuff I get in. So yeah. I'll have um, oats with a almond milk or an oat milk or a something milk eggs banana and then i'll turn that into a pancake so am i demolishing what i've done by turning it into a pancake or does it work just as effectively it works just as effectively Mm, and you're you're getting in all the protein there which is great Mm, interesting so i had um just just talking about my food diary for the week Mm -hmm. um i had rice today but I had a, for, for breakfast, kind of brunch more than breakfast, but it was rice with egg and vegetables. Yeah. So once again, I think just adding the, the egg in, like you say, just helps portion it different, proportion it differently. But it's quite an easy thing to do. Yeah, but also having the protein first thing in the morning is going to mean that your energy levels throughout the day remain stable. Mm. And you're going to cut any sugar cravings that you might have had later on in the day. Because people don't make, recognize that a 3 p.m. crash where I'm craving a bar of chocolate is because my breakfast wasn't bad. Yeah. So here's the question then. Fasting. Mm. What's your views on fasting? Because I don't know whether it's faddy or whether it's ancient kind of knowledge. What do you think? There are many different types of fasting. And I always say perimenopausally not a good idea Mm. because you're wanting to hold on to that progesterone and fasting can place more of a burden on the body so more of a stress on the body the other thing about fasting is our bodies need nutrients Mm. to survive so if you're doing the intermittent fasting where you're only eating in an eight hour window can you get in your seven portions of fruit and vegetables in those in that eating window and are you fueling in that small window in the correct way because if you're not then you're starving your body of nutrients and that's always going to be a stress on the body yeah yeah it's it's a massive debate in my head i'm i'm not a hungry person especially since going on hrt before hrt ravenous constantly hungry couldn't I, I couldn't get I, I couldn't ever feel like it was enough I was never mm. fulfilled mm. um but since HRT my appetite's decreased and slowly the weight's coming off slowly um oh, where was I going <laughs> see one of those moments fasting. <laughs> there was a point fasting so yeah my my thoughts with fasting is I have done it but it was really hard and um and I didn't see any results is, is what I'm trying to get to. There wasn't any results after doing it for a month or so. The results you were looking for was what? Weight loss? Yes. And yes. what sort of fasting did you do? Um, quite harsh. So I was giving myself like a five hour eating window. Oh my goodness. No wonder you found it hard. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and all in. Yeah. So this with... was planning for my wedding or planning for my wedding. Yeah. Planning for the wedding, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. With fasting, never generally recommended for more than two or three days of the week. And I would start off with something a lot gentler, like a 10 hour eating window. So you finish eating dinner at 7pm and you have breakfast at Mm 9am. And maybe something like that would be more suitable to your body. I, I mean, having a five hour eating window is tiny. Yeah. And guaranteed, you were not getting seven portions of fruit and vegetables. No, I definitely wasn't. And yeah. my calories were restricted and I felt tired all the time. And yeah. I didn't feel this euphoria that everyone was saying that I was going to feel. I, no. just felt, I just felt tired. It's, it's very different for women than it is for men. Very, very mm-hmm. different. That's and we hear fasting and there's so many people that advocate for it. And they are all men. Mm. So for them, it does work um, and it's a lot easier. 
but I would go a lot gentler and I'll just add in there very important for the body to have a 12 hour eating break okay so even if you're not fasting trying to go from 7 p.m to at least 7 a.m with no food or drinks other than water and herbal teas is considered an overnight fast and that's very essential for the body to do a sweep through and a repair of the digestive system yeah see i think that's why i thought i could do a longer one because that's that's normal for me maybe yeah. not stopping at seven in the uh in the evening maybe if i would stretch that to eight or nine but yep. i would quite easily go till 10 or 11 yep. with with no food like on a natural normal day yeah um, and that that seems yeah that seems like it's not just achievable but normal yep. so i thought to get more benefit i'd have to increase what i was doing but i think maybe by the time i was wrong you know if your body is stressed out you're not going to lose weight because stress releases cortisol. Cortisol makes you break down glucose and puts it into the bloodstream. Having glucose in the bloodstream makes your pancreas secrete insulin. Insulin goes and grabs onto that glucose and packs it away in your fat cells and tells your body to store fat. So mm. there's a very fine balance. Um, weight loss is not my strong point. It's not an area that I love because it is so complex. Yeah. But I do know if you are stressed... Everybody feels it when they're stressed because they start to get that tire around their middle. And that's mm. because of the breakdown of glucose into your bloodstream and the release of insulin to go and grab that glucose and pack it away in your cells. Uh, so. so it sounds to me like just going back through my timeline, I was particularly stressed about the wedding. We had a 2020 wedding that obviously didn't happen. Then it didn't happen again. Then it happened the next oh. year. So I had three oh. years of kind of up and down yo-yoing. Um, it sounds like I was really super stressed. And then after that stress cleared, I went straight into perimenopause. What a joy. What a joy. <laughs> oh, but stress, like I say, can have an impact on your hormones. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Interesting. If only we could, like, read our bodies, like, like to get in there and see exactly what happened. I know. And you know what? I think we are starting to become more aware of the stuff that is going on in our bodies and there are more people like me who are qualifying yeah. who can help educate because you don't know what's going on how are you expected to know and yeah. the gps and doctors these days aren't qualified to be seeing the complex cases that they are now either no i think we do have to remember that gps are general practitioners yeah. they're not specialists yeah so yeah they we need to go more direct to the people who are, are no more <laughs> yeah. than they do. Although I will say the service that I got with my GP about my HRT was amazing. She just Great. said, sounds like, sounds like it, like it's logical. So let's put you on yeah. HRT. That was as simple as it goes. Did she um, do blood testing with you? Yeah. 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 Did blood testing, but didn't argue amazing. one job. So yeah. she did that, found out that I was deficient in iron, not deficient in B12, even though I was, I was, adding b12 into my diet i'm not deficient in it so i don't i don't yeah. need to do that so yeah. yeah it was it was a good experience so i urge people who are not who have symptoms that they can't explain to start their process with their gp yeah but then to go on and speak to someone like you dana that yeah. knows a little bit more because it's it's really damaging it's damaging to our businesses it's damaging yeah. to our health i mean you said earlier it's for the protection of your family. <laughs> <laughs> and, and from my experience, I can see that's the truth. You know, yeah. I've, I've been a beast sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. That is what we've got time for. But I have another question for you, which is not nutritional based or menopausal based. So what's the sexiest thing about accountants from your perspective? Oh, good question. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> the sexiest thing about accountants, uh -huh. probably I love, I love numbers myself. So accountants love numbers. So I find that really sexy. Yeah. A bit of a data nerd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> right. So I just want to say thank you very much. If people want to get in touch with you, Dana, where, where do you hang out? Where do you like people to go to? 
Um, I am quite prevalent on LinkedIn, so do feel free to uh, link up with me there and connect with me. So it's just okay. Dana Chapman on LinkedIn, or my website is dc-nutrition.co.uk. Wonderful. So I will make sure links to those go underneath this podcast. So if you are interested in, in finding out more about what Dana has to say, then go and connect with her. We didn't speak about seed cycling, but maybe that's something you want to do on your content one day because I'm trying. I'm not perfect, but I am trying. Um, so thank you for that piece of information. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much for being my guest. Thank you so much for having me on, Kelly. It's been lovely to chat. And just a final word for me before I let you go. I wanted to say thank you so much for listening to Accountants Are Sexy. When I say your thoughts are the only thing that matters, I truly mean it because this show is nothing without listeners, right? So please like, subscribe, comment, slide into my DMs. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want more of and I will try and deliver. Um, apart from that, I hope you enjoyed today and I'll see you next week.